Hi again, Ray over at Cigar Climatology, once more in the shop. I wanted to take a minute today and um, give you a bit of a demonstration. And uh, while this is running, we're going to go ahead and bring your attention right over here to this controller. This controller is currently controlling my test humidifier, which is right here below the controller. One of the things that I'd like you to notice is that the cooler is currently undergoing a cooling cycle. That is represented by the small one here in the corner. I'm going to move the camera over just a tad. A small one here in the corner. And while it's cooling, of course, since cooling is operating, any water vapor that passes by the cooling plate will likely get captured in the form of condensation, which means the humidor will also dehydrate. As a result, you can see here that the B2 number, that's the RH currently inside the humidor, is 57, and it's probably going down, 56, and the number 3 here is also lit. Well, why is that important? Number three is telling me, and would then be telling you, that the active humidifier is currently running inside this humidor. Now, while this guy is running away, I want you to bring your attention over here real quickly to this controller. And I believe you can see that. You'll notice here on this controller, B1, it is 95.1 degrees Fahrenheit in here today. Um, to put it calmly, it's hot as hell in here. And it's also 31 RH, so it's not only hot, it's relatively dry. If there's an annoying buzz in the background, that's my fan blowing on me, because like I said, it's rather warm in the shop. Today would actually be a day that I prefer not to be in here. But uh, it's a good day to make this demonstration. Why am I making this demonstration? Well, this demonstration is about the reason why I use a compressor-type cooler or a plasma-type cooler over a TE or thermoelectric-type cooler. And the point that it's 95 degrees in here. And I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, I don't know. Maybe there's 12 or 15 boxes of cigars in here. Uh, this is just a test box for me. But again, sometimes I, I just drop cigars in here that, that I happen to get and are just getting in my way and I don't have any other place to put them, at least in the short term. I doubt that there's any other active controlled humidor maker who is even going to suggest that they have the ability to drop their humidor in a 95 degree environment and suggest and or recommend that you store their, your cigars in them. And of course neither do I. But I'm in the business of, of testing coolers and testing my projects sometimes to the extreme. And this is a demonstration of that. And this is also a demonstration of why I don't believe in thermoelectric coolers. You'll note in the time that we've been talking that it's taken a considerable period of time. This is a long run cycle for one of my coolers to, to reduce itself from about 70.5 down to the uh, 70 degree Fahrenheit mark. And the fact of the matter is, is that this cooling cycle is actually going to run so long that it will actually tend to overshoot the set point by a considerable margin. And that's a considerable margin to me is about one degree Fahrenheit. When you start talking about actually these types of swings in a cooler, now this is still high precision to most people. Um, but in my opinion, it's a law. It's lesser precision because you're really working on the fringe, on the fringe outside, or the fringe edges as to whether or not 
a humidor is really working the way that it's supposed to work. Now, again, this is still head over heels better than, than, than most other people's products. And of course, that's my opinion. You'll also notice that in the time that I've been speaking, even though the cooler's been running consistently, the RH inside the cooler has, has never ever dipped below 50 RH. And, and frankly, that's phenomenal. That's phenomenal performance. And you'll also note that once the cooler switches off, in very short order, this is right back up to the point at which you would expect uh, the cooler or the, the humidor to settle in the first place. Right now, it's at 60.4, 60.5. It actually might overshoot a little bit because that, that humidifier has been running a considerable period of time. Let's real quick check the set point so you can get an idea about what the um, settings are. And this humidifier, uh, this, uh, this humidor is set at a set point of 70 degrees Fahrenheit with a desired RH of 60.2 RH. So after that long cooling cycle, we've settled essentially at 69.3, so we're about, no, a little less than a degree underneath the set point. And B2, we're currently in a flux at, uh, I don't know, 60, 60.4, uh, 60.8. So as you can see, the humidifier is just actually just run again. Um, to go ahead and compensate back up for all of the loss of water due to that prolonged cycle. So, here's the point. Ultimately, there is a huge difference in performance between a TE cooler and a compressor type cooler. And if this can't demonstrate it to you, then nothing can. This is a relatively inexpensive, this is a real cheap wine cooler if you want to know the truth. This wine cooler only has one inch worth of insul insulation in it. Um, it was a pretty inexpensive item. I believe uh, the better part of 10 years ago it cost me uh, about 140 bucks and it's still working. It still holds cigars and it can withstand environments of 95 degrees Plus. Now again, I'm not going to recommend that anyone take any of my products and store them in a 95 degree environment. That's, that's not the point. That's not really the point of this. The point is efficiency. The point is the ability to work under some extreme conditions. Frankly, there is no way that you're ever going to find a thermoelectric cool, cooled wine cooler that's going to have anywhere near the ability of the performance even of this very inexpensive, uh, very cheaply made wine cooler. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show.